free tide this week at CVS. Yes, please. Now we are going to come over to the Redbox Coupon Center. This is always my first stop at CVS. So if you're interested in seeing how you can save tons of money at your local Walmart, stay tuned. Thank you for joining our YouTube channel. My name is Michael Podolsky. I am the best consumer. Bri, it would be of an interest to our viewers to understand what you do, talk about your experience. Why don't we present you, who you are, what do you do? My name is Bri the Coupon Queen, and I teach people through YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, how to learn couponing, how to coupon so that way you can save hundreds of dollars every single month on the products you're going to be buying anyways. So back a couple of years ago, I was living paycheck to paycheck, stressed out, couldn't afford anything, had buyer's remorse if I even went out to dinner or something like that because I knew I couldn't afford it. So I started learning how to coupon. And now I'm at the point where I get all the products that I need for free. Sometimes I even make like actual money from buying it. And I would always tell my parents about it and let them know the really good deals I was getting. I was so excited. And they were like, why don't you start a YouTube channel so you can help other people learn how to do the same things that you're doing so that I can kind of help more people. That was during the pandemic and things like that when people were losing their jobs, really needing to buckle down on their budgets and stuff. So that's what I do. Couponing, when did it start? Give us some history. Is there a history to couponing that you can share with us? I don't know exactly when it started. I think it's been around for over 40 years. Um, coupons have changed a lot. And now with it being 2022, it can be all digital. You can do everything using only your phone. And a lot of people think of when they think of couponing, the show back in the day where she has a whole binder with all these paper coupons and people have the notion that it takes a lot of time and it's like awkward and embarrassing. And it doesn't have to be like that. You can do it all digitally. So it's definitely changed over the decades, but I still do use some paper coupons and now we also have rebate apps as well to get cash back to on products you're going to be buying anyways. Give me a story. How do you get money back? How do you convert your skill to actual cash? You've mentioned okay. that in some cases you actually end up with cash in your pocket. How do you do that? That is by combining the different sales at the stores. So for example, I go couponing at CVS and I match the different deals. I match the coupons and then I use their store rewards to lower my out-of-pocket cost as much as possible. My goal is to always spend $10 or less out-of-pocket. Then I might use a rebate app called Fetch Rewards to get a CVS gift card. So you're just exchanging your points that you get for scanning your receipts. It doesn't cost you anything. Exchange that for gift cards. Now I pay with a gift card. My bank account did not go down at all. My bank account does not know I went to CVS today. Then maybe some of the products that I bought have cash back rebates on apps like Ibotta. Now I paid nothing out of pocket. I submit my receipt to Ibotta. Maybe I get five, six, $10 back. Now I made $10 buying all of those products at CVS. So that's what I teach my students to do as well. Economy is changing. Economy is getting difficult. People will be looking more at coupons. How do you start couponing? For someone who've never collected coupons, what would be the right tips to give to our consumers who are becoming more post-cautious? What to do? What are the first steps? The first step is to pick one store. So I personally recommend picking a pharmacy like CVS, Walgreens, Rite Aid, because they have rewards programs so that you can then use their reward dollars to lower your costs. So I would say pick a pharmacy, download the app, and then get familiar with it. Look at the digital coupons, start learning how to clip the digital coupons, read the weekly ad, which is also available in the app. And then you just kind of a puzzle. You're just putting together the deals on products you need with the digital coupons. And then you can start saving 50% or more just using digital coupons at one store. So couponing can be very powerful and it doesn't have to be 
a ton of time, you can do just those steps until you start getting more and more comfortable with it. Thank you for letting me know. Personally, being this consumer over here, I bought one okay. item in the CVS and my receipt is this long. Those are the ones, though, that are printing on the bottom of it. So, yeah, that's a good thing that you get a long receipt because that means you have a bunch of different coupons and opportunities to save even more. Yeah, uh, that's my experience with CVS. Maybe next time I'll turn it around and look at the coupons that I get. So, Time-wise, you said that it used to take a lot of time to do couponing in the past because they were all paper, now it becomes all digital. Are there apps that you would recommend for collecting coupons from different uh, stores and storing them? Are there such apps on the phone? So all of your digital coupons, except for Walmart, of course, is going to be on the that store's app. So for CVS, the digital coupons for CVS are on the CVS app. The other app you can download is called the coupons.com app. So that is going to be digital coupons as well that you can use at different stores. So that would be another one. But as far as paper coupons, obviously, there's no digital way of organizing your paper coupons. I just use a little coupon binder that I put my paper coupons in that I get every week. When a company offers coupons, is the product the same that we are getting? Is the service the same? companies discounting their products and services. Shall we expect the same level of service from the company? Absolutely. I mean, if you're a product and a service, I would say are two different things, but I think they're the same in the aspect of, if I'm going to buy a bottle of Tide at Walmart and it's 12 bucks, whether I use a coupon or not, I'm buying that exact same bottle of Tide. So it's not like the product is going to randomly switch or change or how much laundry versus water is included in that Tide. It's the exact same bottle that you're going to be buying regardless if you like Tide. So you may as well use a coupon, save some money on it. That way you're reducing how much you're spending every single month. Coupon addiction. Is there such thing as coupon addiction? Absolutely. I mean, just like with anything... When you're, but I think it can be a good addiction because you're saving money. So the more excited you are and the more you enjoy it, the more you want to do it. So I went from spending two, three hundred dollars a month, probably would be more now with how you know the 25% increase in inflation. But a couple of years ago, I was spending two to three hundred dollars out of pocket for my paper products and my laundry products and my razors and my toothbrushes, toothpaste, all of that. Then I started getting really into couponing and like addicted, I guess you would say. And now I can get, last month I calculated it, I grabbed $1,300 of products and my out-of-pocket cost was $53. So with that, I obviously give it to my friends, my family, I can donate it. There's a lot more impact I can have with my skill instead of just for me. So I definitely do think people can get addicted. You do have to be a little careful, make sure that you're still couponing the right way, tracking how much you're spending so that you don't get right back up to that two or $300 out of pocket. The whole purpose of couponing is to reduce your out of pocket cost. So as long as you're doing it the right way, you have a budget, you're tracking how much you're spending, then I think it's a good thing. My wife uh, tells me, okay, Michael, let's go to a store, ABC. They have something on sale. My Mm -hmm. first response is, how much gas am I going to spend on the way there and on the way back? Would it Mm -hmm. make sense? From my perspective, we need to take into account the expense of time, gas, and uh, all this activity needs to be organized properly, I assume. Meaning, uh, uh, the dates until when this coupon is uh, valid, you need to keep it all uh, in your head, I guess. Or how do you organize? How do you organize around all the different coupons and all the different needs that you have? I guess that's my question, to save a royal family budget. What I do and what I teach my students is to coupon at one store once a week. That's it. You want to be consistent. That way your coupons don't expire, your rewards don't expire, because it's not real money, but it's real money in the eyes of the store. So if you have a $5, it's called an extra buck at CVS. That $5, you can go and buy a bottle of Tide. It's it's CVS money. So it works like real money at CVS. So if you coupon once a week, then you're getting a bunch of products. I typically grab $100 on average of product value. 
and pay $10 or less out of pocket. So I don't recommend necessarily, just like you said, running to the store every day when you see a deal. Because yeah, gas is very expensive now. So I teach everyone to do it once a week, the same day, you know, figure out what works in your schedule. Each store has a week for the sale. So most stores, it's Sunday to the following Saturday. So you have seven days to go to the store, take advantage of those deals, and be able to save on those products. So I actually just edited a YouTube video for how to put together a couponing breakdown. It's just like if you go to the grocery store, how are you going to remember everything you need to buy, right? You got to just make a list. So it's the same thing. So I teach in that video what to put down in the breakdown, what's important aspects, and just be as detailed as possible. You can either print it out and take it to the store, or you could even just doodle it on the notepad on your phone. Keep it all digital if you want to. But that way you know exactly what products you're getting, what rewards you're getting back, what coupons you're using, the whole nine yards. That'll also cut down the time, just like you were saying, time versus money. And I help a lot of newer couponers because they'll be spending five, 10 hours trying to put together a haul because they don't know yet how to coupon. They don't know all the ins and outs to find their own deal. So what they wind up doing is watching hundreds of YouTube videos and trying to put deals together. And then they go to the store and sometimes it doesn't work out because they don't understand the mechanics behind it. So cutting that down is, like you said, being organized, very important. And then also getting to the point where you're learning how to find the deals on your own. That way you're not having to rely on watching 10 people's videos to find one deal on Tide that you need. You know what I mean? So it'll save you time that way too. How do you fight over purchasing, right? Because if there is a good deal right now, let me buy it, let me hold it. What do you advise consumers how do you fight over buying? So some couponers do like clear the shelves. I've never done that personally. Um, number one, I don't need a huge stockpile, right? There's three people in the family. So I want to make sure that I have enough for my family. And then obviously I can give some to my other family, friends, things like that. But I only do deals one, maybe two times because I'm couponing consistently and the deals are pretty cyclical. At least once a month, if you like Dove deodorant, it'll be on sale again. So it's not like this is the only deal and the only sale that's going to happen for the rest of your life and you have to grab everything. It's never like that. So you may as well, you know, keep a healthy stockpile. Maybe there's two or three deodorants. Now you get down to one. A sale pops up. You grab two more. So you always have a little stockpile at your house. So to me, there's not really a need to sit there and clear the shelves and things like that. I've never done that person. Typical coupon. How long does it last? That's the first question. And second question is, what happens to coupons during major holiday sales? How companies usually segregate those two sales? Coupon and the sale. Coupons, paper coupons last between two weeks. And I've seen coupons with an expiration date of two months. So it just depends on the product and the sale that the manufacturer of that product is trying to drive. So if they want to get a lot of sales, then they'll be like, hey, one week only for this coupon or two weeks only for this coupon. Um, some of them, like I said, extend two months. So it just depends on what kind of products you're talking about. Um, but as far as holidays and stuff, that also depends too on what kind of sales the manufacturer is trying to drive. But most of the time, there are deals and there are coupons and you stack them together. And that is no matter what month, no matter what week, no matter what day, there's always deals where you can stack the two together. Um, that's going to be a little different than, you know, going to Bath and Body Works or something like that. But even during the holidays there, they'll have 20% off your entire purchase or candle day. And then sometimes they'll mail out some coupons, $10 off a $30 purchase. And you stack that with the candle day pricing. Now you're getting candles extremely cheap. So a lot of times they do that to just try to drive as much sales as possible. And it's a win-win for the consumer because I love candles and now I can get them super cheap. So I'll stock up um, during that sale. And then I don't buy candles the rest of the year. And then I use all my candles up the next candle day or whatever. I do it again. So 
Um, there's usually always ways to kind of stack two different deals or sales together, though. In the beginning of this conversation, you said that you are recommending to concentrate on pharmacies, right? Start with pharmacies as a good place to start couponing. What's your opinion of big stores, Costco, BJ's, big stock items? Do you have an opinion of couponing with those stores? I do. Um, I go to Costco. Costco is one of the ones I love. I've tried Sam's Club and things like that before too in BJ's. Costco is my favorite. I personally don't coupon at Costco. I use Costco to buy all my bulk meats and cheeses and vegetables and things like that that I eat consistently because you are going to save more money versus buying it at Walmart. And it's a better quality, in my opinion, than Walmart meat. Um, I don't buy Walmart meat or produce, so I'll get it at Costco. But if you're going to go to Costco, you can buy, I don't know how much it actually is because I've never done it, but it's a bigger amount. Maybe it's 25 rolls of toilet paper, right? Maybe you spend, I don't know, 25 bucks on it, let's say. That is still cheaper than going to Walmart and getting a nine count of Charmin that I saw yesterday was $19. However, when you go couponing, I get my paper products, I'll get that same nine roll of Charmin for like $2.24. And that's not necessarily how much I'm even spending out of pocket because again, I'm rolling my rewards and things like that. So If you coupon at a pharmacy, you can still get all the products that you need, excluding food, but you can still get the paper products, the Tide, the scent beads, everything that you need for even cheaper than if you just go to Costco and, you know, buy it in bulk. So it's still more beneficial. Is couponing for everyone? Are there people that not capable of couponing. What's your advice? No, I think couponing is for everyone. And that's why I love it so much because it doesn't matter how old you are. I have students, I have couponing courses on my website and I have students who are in college taking the courses, which I wish I would have started when I was in college, learning how to coupon, saving hundreds of dollars every month. I also have seniors in their seventies on strict monthly income, you know, this is I make $1,000 a month, or I make $2,000 a month, whatever, or people on disability where they have set incomes, and they're couponing as well. Everybody coupons for kind of a different reason, but it doesn't matter anything about you, where you live, how old you are, what you do for a living. Anyone can coupon. There's no, you have to be this to, to buy a coupon. You know what I mean? And that's why I love it so much because I can teach it to anyone who wants to coupon if coupons obviously are allowed in that state or in that country or whatever the case may be. But yeah, absolutely anyone can do it. So I never want anyone to get discouraged. Oh, I'm too old by now or, oh, I'm too young. I'll coupon later. No, start now. You may as well. It's a skill and it's something you can use for the rest of your life. So there's no harm in that. What are the top three couponing tips that you will recommend to consumers? The first tip is have a budget. It is so beyond important to have a budget because if you don't, you're easily get right back up to spending two, three, four hundred dollars out of pocket because you're not tracking what you're spending. Tip number two is to look at your actual cash cost. So what I mean by that is how much are you swiping your credit card for or how much are you swiping your debit card for? Because some people, when they start couponing, couponers will post it as You're spending $30 out of pocket, but you're getting $30 back in rewards, so it's free. But your bank account went down $30. So you want to make sure that you're looking at your cash cost and focusing on that to make sure that it is as low as possible, because that's what you're going to be writing in that budget. Yes, you got $30 in rewards back, Walgreens cash or extra bucks at CVS or something like that, but that's not real money that you can pay your bills with. So you want to make sure that you're focusing on that. And then the other one is deals and sales will vary from state to state, region to region, rebate apps vary. So if you're going to be following someone else's deal, take the extra couple seconds at the house before you go and run to do that deal and double check that you have that coupon, double check that you have that rebate on the rebate app. You don't want to get to the store, buy the product and you get home and you don't have anything. And now you just spent full price for that product because you didn't take a few seconds before you went to the store. So that's definitely the top three tips to make sure that you're 
couponing the right way, kind of take it slow, and you'll be able to be successful at it and start saving good money. In order to wrap up this conversation, I really enjoyed this conversation. I think it will be very useful to our consumers. Tell us a little bit about your channel. Most of my viewers are between like 25 and 65. I've had my channel for about three years. Um, I show deals at CVS, Walgreens, and Walmart. Those are the three stores that I do. And now I have a new series on my channel every Friday for couponing 101. So like I mentioned, I just edited that video for how to do a coupon breakdown. Just more behind the deal, behind the deals, behind the scenes. So that way people can learn more of how to coupon for themselves. But then they can also watch my deal videos where I explain exactly how to do it, where to get the coupon. I try to be as detailed as possible to make it as easy as possible for other people to try it. Because I don't want anyone to get discouraged or frustrated or overwhelmed or anything like that. So that's what my channel is all about. Try to make it as easy as possible for people to be able to replicate what I'm doing and learn what I'm doing for themselves so that they too can be able to pay off debt like I have, you know, save up for a house, save up for a vacation, whatever their main big financial goal is, like shoot for the stars, have a goal. And that's what I teach on my channel. Brie, thank you very much. Viewers, Please like our channel, please subscribe to it.